<laughs> All right, guys, Miniature Cap one here. You will notice that my voice is not matched with webcam. That's because OBS uh, deleted my microphone audio for this for this game, but it is a really good game and I wanted to share it with you guys anyway. So hopefully you don't mind my post game narration on this as it is a really good, uh, really good game for Hullbreaker top lane singe. That is right. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing Hullbreaker videos every so often on this channel. Uh, as long as riot does not delete the item because I think the item is wacky overpowered and you're going to see that in this game, uh, because it is excellent and is excellent versus AP top laner such as karma here in this clip uh, and it is excellent versus any sort of magic damage side laner so they also have an ari this game uh this applies to tanks as well because those champions just have such a hard time killing it meaning that you get a ton of value off of the item because magic damage champions dps tends to be tied to cooldowns whereas ad champions dps tends to be tied to auto attacks um and if it's not then they can still auto attack quite hard so for that reason, because AP champions don't deal, generally don't deal bonus magic damage to uh, to minions, the cannons become very hard for them to kill. The exceptions of this is like Gwen and Mordekaiser, but not even Mordekaiser really, because Mordekaiser doesn't get that much attack speed, but Gwen especially can just shred. So be careful with her uh, in terms of AP champions, but otherwise most AP champions and mag magic damage champions have a very hard time doing a Hull Breaker. Speaking of hard time, uh, Karma Top Lane, very fun. This patch, they did uh, they did help out our boy, though, which is uh, Singe got a ton of what I believe to be indirect buffs this patch, so I'm really, like, weirded out as to why his... Um, assume a little bit of proxy here. Uh, we're really weirded out as to why his win rate went down in high elo, but it seems like it should have gone up. We'll see. It's just early, early patch stats, so I don't know. That proxy is possible, by the way, even though I took a ton of damage, in part because they buffed... Doran's ring this patch. They buffed every starting item except for Cole, basically, because Cole was already very, uh, very strong. And people have realized that because Karma started Cole. But Doran's ring got plus 20 health and plus 3 AP. I know what you're thinking. 3 AP, that doesn't mean a lot. Well, Singe Poison controls a 0.9 ratio. Having plus 3 AP at level 1 is the same thing as having uh, Absolute Focus permanently activated at level 1. Now, it's obviously, it doesn't scale like Absolute Focus does, but the fact that you can have that rune's worth of damage at level 1 while not taking the rune is very good in my opinion this game i actually did an aftershock ignite ghost setup for 1v1 potential i did aftershock uh with demolish health scaling shard into into um i believe it was celerity and gathering storm secondary because they're just really good on singed uh especially in a patch like this that's focused on making games last a bit longer which is really good so longer games generally means singed profits in general, like I said, his win rate did go down quite hard in high elo. Like, it went down almost 6%. It's like 5.5% down from where it should be. I'm trying to rotate over here because my Briar is, uh, or my Nocturne's getting killed by Briar. I gotta back off here. I'm running away. The Ignite does not kill Unlucky. She's healing during her, uh, during her E there. All good. But yeah, um... The patch has a lot of changes that should be good on paper for Singe. Another another change here is Dark Seal gets plus 10 health as well. Uh, compared to what it used to be, it is 50 health now instead of 40, which is very nice. So Doran's Ring is up to 90 health, and Dark Seal is up to 50. So both of those items getting buffed. Jungle overall getting nerfed a bit as well, meaning that snowballing should happen a bit less. Turret plates, I talk about this a little bit later in the video, but you can't hear that because my... Uh, Kha'Zix invading her, her Krug's... Does he get it? He gets a smite off, but gets stunned and he gets CC'd into the wall and killed. At least Karma didn't get the kill. It looks like she would have, but I think Briar's bleed killed him. Yeah, turret plate's worth a bit less gold now as well, which actually is quite good for Singed because generally the matchups that Singe plays against, like your Jaces, your Dariuses, your Nars, and stuff like that. Uh, and just most champions tend to beat Singed early game, so losing a bit less gold to them farming your plates is going to be really nice. And just generally longer games is good for Singe because the more often you hit level 16, the more often you get to turn into a unit, a raid boss, etc. Here, I'm just waiting to soak those minions of XP before I walk along for the proxy. Uh, the reason why I am proxying here is that I just can't push that versus Karma. She will either freeze or poke me out, so it's not worth it. She wants to try and mess with me here. Gonna go ahead and kite down. But yeah, longer games tends to benefit Singe, in my opinion, because you get higher higher amounts of AP, you get level 16, which is 100 stats, like, 
so I'm surprised his win rate went down, but to me, like, it, it seems like it would be on a, on paper a good patch. So it might just be weird, uh, weird patch stats. Or early patch stats are usually kind of odd. And then um, I'm sure people are probably still running Conqueror. Conqueror got nerfed. Um, Fleet Footwork got nerfed. Uh, what else got nerfed? I mean, Predator is not nerfed. Phase Rush is not nerfed, and Aftershock is not nerfed. I have a feeling that those three will be the big Singed Runes after the Conqueror nerf. Uh, it wasn't even like a huge Conqueror nerf, but it is a general DPS Conqueror nerf because the adaptive force on it went down every stack. And so over the course of a long fight, that does make a difference, especially with everyone having a little bit more HP. So the win rate delta could be due to people just running... Um, just running uh conquer just blindly without reading the patch notes that can happen here i'm gonna go merc treads because it is karma side lane plus eventual re side lane so i think merc treads will be really really good just get to just get to uncuck myself from their damage basically uh i need to experiment with cull on singe like a doran's ring into a, into a recall cull because i feel like so many people are buying cull now uh, I know the item like payoff is really good, and uh, if you if you think about it, in a longer game, the more likelihood you have of getting to 100 CS on call eventually you profit, right? So it like it tends to work out. Uh, we can maybe gank her here. I have Ghost in 17, Ignite is up, Ult is up. So that's up to Kazix though if he wants to come up. Is there ping on the way for? Yeah, it it, it it's a. Uh... Like I said, on paper, a very good patch for Singed. Just weird that the win rate happened the way that it did. All right, gonna go. Ward the bush in case she kites in. Up the ignite. And she will hold her flash, but I get a kill, which is quite nice. You can have that one, Kha'Zix. That one's on the house. Also, oh yeah, Demolish going to pair very well with the uh, with the whole breaker setup, by the way. Just a very, very OP item. But as you'll see here, plates are worth uh, 50 gold less a piece, so which is, in my opinion, that could have been the only change they made this patch, and it would have still been an amazing patch. But yeah, plate gold is down. Uh, a little goofling on the briar here. See a noob. There was a patch. Uh, so turret plates originally came out at 160 gold, and they were they were like that for years. They came out in season eight. Uh, there was a patch in season ten. I think early season ten, like patch ten point two, they reduced turret plates from 160 down to. What was it was it 140 and i think they reverted that because they thought that it was like too much uh of a nerf to turret plates but the game the game nowadays has been way snowballier than back then like average game time in challenger was like 21 and a half or 22 minutes before this patch so it was like yeah you know uh you stay in queue for an hour and then you play a 22 minute game doesn't feel that great and riot seems to think the same way obviously in lower elos the game time was longer on average but this this patch will make game time longer because so many different things just reduce the amount of gold that you get uh turret plating draven getting a fight go buddy go the enemy draven always right against him li draven you are my hero uh Turret plate gold going down, uh, herald going down in terms of gold value by a hundred. Individual dragon stacks are nerfed, but dragon soul is buffed, so you can't just scale forever. But it also means that if enemy team gets like one single dragon buff, like an ocean buff, you don't just auto lose the game, which felt really bad. Like, like I like I explained this in my patch notes rundown video, but like you could be playing Darius versus Vlad in top lane or something, and the way you play that is like you want to poke him down then a little bit, then all in, but with if the enemy Vlad's jungler just cheeses an early dragon or ocean stack, then you could never poke him down anymore because he would just heal 2.5% missing health per second or per every five seconds and it would be crazy. But that being said, um, yeah, dragon stacks are all individually nerfed by I think about like 30%, whereas the soul is buffed by about 18% is what Riot Freak said. So that's just really good for the game. Slows down a little bit more. And I'm glad that Riot finally listened to, like, you know, an alt here because Karma's chasing. She missed her Q. I think I'm chilling, though. A little goofling, maybe? Nice. And I'm gone. I don't think she could kill me even if I, uh, missed the goofling there. Give her some grass stacks, but hey, I'm a charitable man. You can have them. I believe I can stay for one more here. Very nice. There's lots of things to slow the game down, which is awesome. Here, in terms of my build, I can either go for a Rod of Ages first, or I can go for Demonic first. Either way, you do need AP. Uh, I think I want to go Rod of Ages here. 
I believe I did go Rod of Ages here. But I'm thinking about it. It, it will depend also on what Karma builds. She's actually she has a Catalyst, so I'll probably end up matching uh, her Rod of Ages with Rod of Ages. Just for mana, because if she has infinite mana, then she can actually mana drain me in a fight. So having my own Rod of Ages for mana would be very, very good. Alright, back to the push. She's kind of low here. I have Ignite and Ghost. We can eventually kill her whenever my ult comes up. This will be this will be a freebie. She's very confident because she is Karma versus Singe. Like she should be confident, but I am also gonna build Hullbreaker. So here's Kha'Zix coming up. I believe we just kill her here. Get the fatty W. Got the ignite and she's dead. Very nice. Got her flash that time as well, and she has no TP. I didn't time it, but she does have no TP, so I'm gonna get some fat turret plates. Every two plates, you're gonna get a hundred less gold because every every plate is worth fifty less gold. Um, Harold is down by a hundred local gold as well. So even when you get a Herald and then you summon it to take tower plates, you're gonna get a lot less gold overall, which again is good. Is good for the game in my opinion. These are just all good changes that they're making. I don't have a problem with any of them. Uh, something weird I noticed you'll see in a second, but it appears that the final turret plate here is still worth 175. So first blood is worth 400 and plate is still worth 175, for which is, see, look right there. That's really weird. I don't know why that happened. The final plate's supposed to be worth um, 125 as well, but hey, it could be a bug, who knows. I also it also could just be a weird way the game is displaying the um the plating there I, I don't know but uh here is Roa I finished mine like about a minute after she finishes hers but I'm way ahead of her on the gold curve so it should be fine it's, cl it's closer to 45 seconds actually but oh early death timers by the way I didn't, didn't talk about this yet uh early death timers are down uh levels two to nine on an average of four seconds I think level. Level 8 is actually the biggest death timer decrease. Uh, it's down by like 6.5 seconds, I think, at level 8. So, just a lot, not a lot less punishing. You're still going to get punished by dying early game, but it is generally less punishing to die early game now. Because Riot decided that it was a little too punishing when you die, the enemy top laner would just like sit and then take uh, all of your plates and run her down here, maybe. I have Roa and Merc I'm fast enough possibly to kill her, but she has, if she just uses Empower W, she's going to heal off of me forever. Which is a little annoying. Then oh, Swain's gonna slow me here. She's a little too fast, boys. Gotta run. Okay, time to leave. She put a pink ward in the bush, I believe. Yeah, she did. Let's see if I can kill this. She's kind of walking through poison, but she also has empowered W, so. Okay, time to leave. This is not worth fighting. I'm getting ganked, boys. Give her the give her a little goofling. She used her R there as well. I believe she did anyways. Uh, actually, I don't think she did. But all good. Whenever I was playing the game, I, I assumed that she had, but I guess she hadn't. I, I'm the type of person who listens to audio cues a lot. Uh, your brain actually processes audio cues faster than it does visual cues, so I always leave my in-game sounds on. A lot of people like to play with in-game sounds low or off. Personally, I think it's a bad idea. Uh, but... Her ultimate audio, I thought, had played there, but it hadn't. That was my bad on that call. Potentially killable karma here. I have Ignite coming up soon. Her bush is worded. I don't think she actually saw me walk out of the bush here. But every time she hits me, I do get mana back. Same thing with her. Every time I hit her, she gets mana back as a Broa, but I don't think she can kill me 1v1 basically ever, so not super worried about that. And then we just farm it up. Nice part about Roa Hullbreaker is you do get that mana to uh, to supplement your push. One thing that is unfortunate about Demonic Hullbreaker is, yeah, your push is a little bit faster. But again, you get... Um, go ahead and build into my Hullbreaker here a second. You, you do get uh, out of mana sometimes. Because people, do, people will fight you for quite a while. Well, if she had ult, she would have used it there, wouldn't she? So maybe I did get her ult. I don't know. All right, bot lane. All right, bot lane. I'm running down. All right, team's getting some value. Karma, Karma TP'd down here, I think she did. Or she just walked, I don't know. Either way, team's doing good. 
The nice part about buying Winged Moonplate here is she might just think that I'm going Force of Nature. Use my Demolish here. Big value. It's, uh, almost 800 damage there on Demolish at level uh, level 10 is massive. That was quite juicy. If I had just stayed top, I would have gotten um, would have gotten level eleven here. But I I wanted to make sure that it was it was either run bot or run top and split. And there's just no way to know for sure what the better call is. Because what if Karma TP is down there and then I could have been there and then I'm not there, then my team loses right. So it's like if you're on top, it's a gamble. If you're on bot, it's a gamble. It's both a gamble. Sometimes like that, you have to make judgment calls as top lane, especially when you're not running teleport in a setup like this. The reason why I ran ignite. Uh, Ignite has actually nerfed this patch a little bit because um, everyone gets a little bit more health due to their starting items, but not Karma because she started with a Cole and not a Doran's Ring. So, very nice for me. And because longer games do tend to benefit teleport a bit more, longer games means more opportunity for macro plays. That was what Riot said in their patch notes is they just felt like the game... While laning phase is an uh, integral part of the game that players, especially in high elo, did not get to experience the more fun later aspects of the game, such as macroing, team fighting, ro rotating, like making, uh, getting big item break points and stuff like that. Because like how how many how long can you really enjoy a five v five, uh, battle battle game when most games are decided, uh, in a 15, 14 minute laning phase window? Here we go go for the fight. We fling. I have Ignite here. We can probably kill her. Nice, 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 nice. Run the Ari down. If we dodge the charm. Rip. I'm trying to narrate as if this is not a uh, post narration. Makes it more exciting for you guys. <laughs> but I already know what happened this game, so it is a bit of a banger. I'm gonna run. I'm run through here. I wish I had the original audio here. My cat is yelling. Nothing like a Minish Cat video without the cat yelling. Yes, cat. Yes, buddy. <laughs> he just wants me to play with him. It's okay. I'll play with him. <laughs> and then I died here, unfortunately, just being a bit of a menace in their base. Briar, run on my Nami. Run, buddy! She got the bubble. Dude, Briar is such a cool champion. I gotta learn that character. She's definitely OP right now, but I, I gotta learn it. She seems like so much fun. She seems she seems very very uh very unique and I I love unique champions like I'm actually learning Teemo off stream right now I know you guys are I know you guys are gonna say uh Teemo Minish Cap what is wrong with you you are a you're a virgin beta cuck range champion loser uh and you know while while I agree with that <laughs> Kappa jokes Kappa jokes well 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 while I do think you know I am a bit of a hypocrite for learning Teemo after saying all sorts of bad things about range top laners I will say Teemo is definitely harder to play than I thought he would be and he is really fun I love the shrooms I love just slapping people for a million damage auto attacks with full EP builds like it's super fun to me all right Malzar we're here we're here let's go I have ult in five he dies unfortunately but I do have a do you have demonic not demonic sorry um ultimate Run him down. The best I can. I, I have Grievous Winds on Ari, not on Karma, though. I couldn't Grievous her for any of that healing there. But, oh. I got Draven. I got teammates. I live for a long time. Karma will die to poison. Run her down. Want to get a double, but Draven gets a kill. Gets a cash shot. Good for him, right? Get the cannon. Very nice. I have Hullbreaker now. So I go back and buy it. Make sure I ping it to my team so they know what I'm doing. Hullbreaker again, very, very good versus magic damage, very good versus AP. I don't like the item versus AD. I don't think I, I don't think I have personally ever beaten an AD champion when I bought Hullbreaker. At least the matchup slash side laner. Like, it is you, you can force it versus AD side laners. I just don't think it's that good, honestly, versus AD. I, I think I think this it's just less less useful. At least on standard. Like if you if you're a tank champion, you're gonna buy armor. And Hullbreaker, like Scion, I think it can work fine. But if you're like Singe and you're going to buy AP and Hullbreaker, not quite as useful, uh, in my opinion. So, Lucian was bottom. Go ahead and push. Karma team being top, so I think I just stick to the side lane here. If he's paying attention, he knows that I have Hullbreaker and he'll probably stay. Otherwise, he might go top. Looking kind of bad for my team, actually. We'll see how this goes. Let 
Unlucky. I might be able to fight him here. I could wait for my ult, though. Get a little fling there. A little bit of damage. I'll break your minion slap them a bit, too. Maybe just go for him? They got the ignite. Surely. Uh... <laughs> you got the heal. Like I said, guys, I already know what happens in this game. I'm just narrating in post, but I'm trying. I'm trying to make it exciting for you guys. Okay, I, I understand that the uh, the the post game narration is not the greatest, and uh, I'm sorry. You know, OBS screwed me, but it was a really good game, and I didn't want to waste the footage. So tomorrow for sure, I'll be back with a normally live narrated game or live live recording which this would have been except obs screwed me so all good right now i think I, yeah i'm saying that they're that they're doing baron for sure and draven almost was pixel perfect on the steel almost but that is okay so them having baron is a little bit rough for me because hullbreaker does get soft countered by baron because baron minions also push quite hard and the cannon does get hard to kill so basically what your hall breaker does as well uh makes the cannon hard to kill and pushes but uh i'm gonna try and ping my bot lane back here they're definitely getting briar ulted oh you hate to see it run run my child go ahead and fling that let's start pushing the enemy ari is doing a uh the triforce bob chin meme build with, she'll eventually get Hallbreaker as well, probably, but we'll see how it goes. My bot lane, Sag. Lucian, pushing mid. I have to recall here. Uh, Malzar got him, actually. Should be fine. If if I can dodge her charm, I can maybe fight her and kill her. We'll have to see, though. I don't have Demonic for damage, and she she is buying um AD items, so she'll have decent DPS. Especially the Triforce procs, but I think I'm okay. It'll just depend. I have 3,000 health still, even though I, I took 500 damage from minions and her. Static Shiv doing some work as well. How many times have they nerfed Static Shiv, by the way, and the item is still being picked? Oh, my God. All right, games. Hi, cat. My cat's back. Hi, buddy. Oh, he's here. He never, he ne usually never walks up to me whenever I'm uh, on my PC, but he hangs out with my girlfriend when she's on her PC, though. He's He's racist. That's why. My cat is a racist. Kappa, kidding, joking, joking. It's a joke. And he is now under my desk. Hi, buddy. Speaking of cats, we're going to go fight this Ari, who is actually a fox, but I'll call her a cat. Hit by the charm, no worries. She's in my W. Get a little goofling action going there. She uses her cleanse, which she has a cleanse. I'm going Silver Mirror Dawn. She tries to jump the wall. She fails it. Then I just run her down because she used all of her ults and she has no flash, so bang. Saved my ignite as well. Nice shutdown. Gonna attempt to push tier two top. We'll see what happens. I don't have a cannon here, but it should be fine because I just have hull breaker, so I hit really hard. This is weird. I got minion blocked right there, so I can't actually auto the turret. You see that? That was that was weird. I was clicking at everything, but big demolish damage. Team's getting Briar ulted in mid. Bro, no. God, that character looks like so much fun. My wave is dead, sadly, but I can get at least one auto here. Let me just run away. I think they're going to come up top and defend this, so probably just grab the wave and then run and GTFO. Go and get my demonic. I'll finally have one going damage. Oh, yeah, they're scouting for me. They're scouting for me. They want me. Time to run. Here's Demonic. I think I just build towards my Rylize next. Could go Rylize. Uh, Karma has Visage, so I could actually go Void Staff as well. I wanted to have more right click damage. I could go Nasher's Tooth here. Could go Static Shiv as well for Wave Clear, but I already have decent Wave Clear. I actually think that, that Nasher's Tooth might be better with this setup than Static Shiv. Whenever Static Shiv was was pre nerf, yeah, it was crazy because you could just one shot a minion, literally one shot a wave, and I, I did do that with the with the death cap setup if you remember. Okay, team's fighting. Gonna go ahead and ghost in. 
Gonna kill the karma here. Oh, but she heals so much. And the shields are brutal. Run away from the swain here. Use Landers as well. Probably better for me just to back off. Unlike I couldn't do more there. Karma is just one of those champions that naturally counters Singed. But Hullbreaker naturally counters her, so... Let's push a little bit. Let's, let's, let's be a little bit of a bully here. I don't need to back yet. My team is uh, about to respawn, so let's see how this goes. Even without my Hullbreaker on the cannon, it takes her so long to kill it. You see that? Then whenever I put it on... Oh my god, she has so much so much trouble. Look, look at that. I turned my cannon into a raid boss. Because she's because she's Karma, because she's an AP champion. And granted, she's not exactly going a high damage build, but like still. Just gonna continue pushing here. Gonna be a menace. She cannot she cannot double you the cannons. She can shield herself all day, but she can't actually double them to heal. She'll double you me to heal if I walk up, but I also want just wanna push. I just wanna shove. Here's W on me. She will no doubt just do empower W's on me to keep healing. I have ult coming up soon that I can maybe fight her and just force it. <laughs> Look how long it takes her to kill it. <laughs> Alright. Do I ult? Yes. Yes, just fight her. Now I have two cannons here now, by the way. Okay, if I, I can probably just ignore her and push the turret, which I might. But she's being annoying and trying to tank me on the wave, and she she honestly kind of can. This is why Void Staff will be very good. I could go uh, Serpent's Fang as well. All right, I have three cannons now. I'm just gonna ignore her, I think. Wait for the demonic to wear off and just right click this turret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three cannons, three cannons, three cannons. Casual Briar Cadra, two fifty damage per auto turret though. Not to mention I have. Uh, Demolish as well as my AP. Time to run. <laughs> oh god, there's Ari. If it's normal Ari, that's fine. But Triforce Ari just does a lot more damage sometimes than normal Ari. It's very disgusting. The AD items, by the way. Alright, dodge the charm. He's getting sped up by Karma, though. Oh, man. Aftershock, maybe, maybe. Nah, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> like I said, guys, I already know what happens this game. I'm just trying to make the narration exciting. Just for you guys, but I have Rylai's money here. <laughs> I can't complain too much about OBS. It is free software, so. Wait, isn't that like a paid version, though? I have no idea. Unfortunately, dead. Kha'Zix also unfortunately dead. I do have Rylai's now. So, actually finding the Karma and Ari in Silent and killing them will be a lot easier because I can just stick to them a bit easier, especially the Ari. Karma's not as much of an issue now. I think they're Baroning here. Gotta be careful. But Ari definitely is way slipperier. She's not as tanky, but slipperier. And then Ari is actually going Hallbreaker as well. That is part of the meme build for her. The split push build. <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm just praying for Riot. As much as as much fun as it is to buy this item, it it literally is so problematic. Because as you can see, like I can either just force the wave through the enemy champion, or I can draw multiple people. Like I think they're gonna fight here. I'm gonna walk up here. Oh yeah, Briar on Draven. I'm here. I'm here for you guys, and he's dead. Unfortunate. I think Anna Ari, I think she dies here. They're going for me. I have Merc Treads. Run, run, run. Oh, God. Ah! I'm running, boys. I'm flinging her. I wonder if you can abuse her targeting by just... Yeah, she lives here, which is crazy. Uh, I wonder if you can abuse her targeting by just, like... You know how she switches to the lowest health target? If I can just walk into her range, then walk out of her range over and over to just, like, glitch the champion? I saw a video of somebody standing behind the blue buff wall at level one and briar just like runs around to them over and over without understanding what's happening like her w would not target the enemy champion which is hilarious either way yeah and it's gonna be a uh, a void staff 
The Blighting Jewel is down to 1,100 gold this patch. They decided that Blighting Jewel was a bit too weak, and I agree, it was too weak. So instead of buffing the pen because they didn't want it to be a one sh uh, a component OP item, they just buffed the gold cost down to 1,100. So I can actually get it here. I could have gotten it anyways, actually, with uh, selling Dark Seal, but... Here we go. Now this, this pen should help, but Void Staff, if I can finish it, will help even more. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go push top. You as a top laner, you always be pushing on the opposite side of the map as the as the next objective spawn, just to try and draw people away from it. it matters more whenever you are closer to like closer to the spawn of it, but in general, uh, teams are kind of dumb and will sort of just int. So I'm just gonna go ahead and walk over here now, even though it's way sooner than. Ari's doing the same thing. She has all breaker as well. Ain't no words. If I if I dodge the charm, I'm pretty sure I kill her here. Because she can run away with her with her ult charges, but if she's like if she doesn't run away, then I kill her for sure. And even if she runs away, then guess what? I'm still singed and I have hull breaker, so just push. So she's trying to run away. I don't think it's gonna be enough, Ari. I think you're just dead. R.I.P. Bozo. Team's fighting. I gotta push. Team is wiped. I gotta push, push, push. Malzar's alive, though. That's good. Their Baron is almost out, though. They got it a while ago. I'm just going to see if uh, I can make this worth it. We're going to lose Inhibitor no matter what I think. I'm going to try and get their Inhib. Here's Demolish. Oh, my God. 1,200 damage Demolish procs. Here's Team... Eh? Okay, I have Draven spawning in five. I can recall here as well. Karma's is, Karma's is in base. She she recalled. She's keeping in our base now. But I believe I can get there. I'm recalling. Malzahar is still alive. They're just wave clearing. Baron did go down, which is super good. No void staff money yet, but I'm here, boys. Here's Ari. Ignite on Briar. Get her. She's grievous. Malzahar with the DPS post-mortem kill. Let's go. Oh my god, the ace is running down mid, boys. We can probably end here. Right? Surely, surely, surely. No one has TP for that top wave, sadly, but that is okay. I do a lot of damage to super minions, just any sort of AP champion late game. That's like the one thing that AP champions have over AD champions in Modern League is that we deal a lot of damage to, to cannons and stuff, uh, or super minions. Which only matters if you're losing, if you think about it, which is kind of lame. But yeah, just take this up. It's already half health. That's because super minions have negative MR values. That's why. All right. So just run ahead of the wave a little bit for extra DPS a little bit faster. Then we just auto, auto, auto. We can definitely end the game here. Bring the Swain out. <laughs> and GG. The split push Hullbreaker strikes again. Riot. I'm going to keep terrorizing your games with this until you remove the item. You know what to do. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and load up uh, the post game here. I'm gonna, I honored the Draven this game. He deserved it. Man played very well. Check my damage to turrets. Then I'll check the Hullbreaker damage afterwards as well. But 35k damage, the Draven had 56k. I actually had, even though it wasn't as high as Draven, I had higher damage than everyone on the enemy team, which is decent. Damage to turrets, 12.3k damage to turrets. I'll go ahead and watch the uh, the replay and look at my Hellbreaker value. That being said, I hope you guys are having a really good day. Hope things are chilling. Here comes the replay. Replays were actually broken yesterday, by the way. They <laughs> Riot finally got them fixed, so they actually work again.
And this is me pushing right here. We'll check the demolish value, which I believe I got a massive demolish proc here. Demolish itself was about 900, then my auto is doing 300. Hullbreaker is at 1,000, 1,200 here. So not like a whole ton of damage, but it, it it does matter. Like whenever you actually hit a turret, it's so impactful. 17, 20 Hullbreaker damage there. Now I recall for my team. As Draven gets value. Yeah, so much, so much turret damage here. That's why I rewinded the uh the replay, but I'm with you. I'm with you, boys. Not sure that uh the magic pen does help you hit towers a bit harder as well from your uh my void staff component, the blighting jewel, which is nice. You Draven smacking with the autos here. Giga Chad behavior. Ignite fling the briar. Give her some anti heal. She pops her stone plate, but she is dead. Yeah, right. Nerfing jungle. Honestly, I think it was a great call. Like, it sucks for junglers, but if you think about it, I talked about some patch notes. Like jungle was twenty percent stronger than the the next strongest role, which in my opinion was support. And then you think about how how weak like top lane and arguably eighty carry are in comparison. I said arguably because I don't really believe in high elo AD carry is weak, but in low elo for sure AD carry is weak. For sure it is. Because the roll scales off mechanics. Like if you think that the that jungle was was twenty percent stronger than support, which I believe to be very strong, then it just imagine how much stronger it was and everything else. But yeah, that being said, guys, thank you for watching. I do appreciate you so much, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace, guys. Terrorize the rift with Hallbreaker if you can. Ape versus magic damage only. Have fun. Love you.